Hello my friends, today I am starting a new project. Yep, another one. This time the largest of the presented so far on YouTube because there will be 8 figures, a building and 2 vehicles. Does it sound interesting? I am sure it does. I received a package from a friend. Great packed. It took me a while to find the content. Lots of foam, lots of screws, lots of security. It's good that I had church cordless screwdriver because it would take me ages with an ordinary screwdriver. And inside, a stand designed by me and made by my friend Artur Twardzik. Due to the amount of work I had to do, Artur suggested that he would build this stand for me exactly according to my design and arrangements that were made during the work. You can find the link to his Facebook account in the description. Please visit his page and check the models he presents. As you can see all the little things are separate so that they are easy to paint, but more on all of that in a moment. I will show you exactly each part of this base. Ok, the current project will be a collection of several projects. First the stand you see here with the railroad which will be added for a moment, second the king tiger, third tuned up with sidecar and finally the figures from D-Day miniatures. I made the review some time ago so you can check it by clicking the link above. I also have some figs from Mantis and Alternity but don't know if they will be used here. So it will be a lot of work. At the beginning I took the spruce from the model to limit the amount of space I take up. Despite its size the model is simple and doesn't contain many parts. It turned out that everything will fit in a small plastic box. I need to assemble the vehicle body to try on to the stand. Exactly, a thick photo frame is best for this diorama. Its preparation is very simple and quick. I have removed unnecessary elements such as the support, hangers, glass and passport too and I have a frame ready to set up the base. It looks like everything fits perfectly. The model will also fit although it will protrude a bit but it's not a problem for me. There is no railway track because I didn't say it before but this building is a piece of railway station which I have copied from the original war photo. Of course some modifications were done but the main idea was the same. The railway is a mini art set that is perfect for my project. We have almost 70 cm of track here so it will surely be enough for a long long time. As for me I will use this set about 3 times. Inside there are 8 identical frames with slippers and rails as well as fixing elements. The assembly is extremely simple so there is not much to talk about. The most important thing is to measure the length we need. I used 2 sections which will be used almost completely because even the cut pieces will be used to arrange the second track. I glued the edges with pieces of plastic so that they look nice on the stand. There is no point in wasting time cleaning all traces of the frames because they will be covered by stones that are poured between the wooden blocks. This is for those who noticed that I didn't do it. Of course I checked the size and more precisely the width of the wagon so that the trucks weren't too far and also too close to the ramp. Honestly I have a lot of setting options because on the one hand I have the actual size and on the other I can adjust the distance to the model and it will still look good. 
The plan is that the tank stands on sleepers and not on rails and everything will be adjusted to this assumption. Of course it would be ideal if everything was exactly as it should be modeling on real sizes, but minor distortions don't ruin the appearance. Ok, now let's do an inspection of the building and the ramp. As a reminder, the author of this work is my colleague Artur Tvarczyk. I just designed the main assumption and appearance. All details have been refined by Artur and in consultation with me as to the materials and the exact arrangement. The cracked elements add to the character and you have to admit that they look awesome. Have you noticed how realistic these stairs look when combined with bricks? I hope so. The ramp consists of gypsum plates specially cast for this project. The slabs don't cover the entire ramp as there will also be some compacted sand surface. The front of the ramp is made of single bricks stacked one by one. This work gave a great effect and in combination with the damaged beam it's great. Pay attention to the screws on the beam. Even this fitting to concrete slabs is not accidental. Everything has been refined down to the smallest detail. The building in the original photo is small, but for the diorama it had to be enlarged to be a good background for the tank. The entrance doors are from mini art, but Arthur has improved them a lot by adding metal details that completely change their character. The metal railing is a piece of wire and a plastic profile. The bigger window is also from mini art and was heavily upgraded. The second window is made from scratch from a plastic profile with thin seal just like a larger one. The window seal is made of a piece of thin metal plate. Of course I will add glass to it and possibly some plywood to imitate some damage. A rough cast is a very important element. It was made of plaster which was applied wet with a sponge and rubbed dry with sandpaper. The edges of the building are perfectly finished and the sides and back are covered with plastic. The front will be painted with the name of the village. I hope I can do it. Of course a large part of the inscription will be invisible due to the destruction of the plaster. I have to admit that the effect of visible bricks is great. Hope I don't screw this up. The roof is based on balsa boards. They are made raw which will undoubtedly be seen when I paint them. It's covered with a tar paper on the top. The individual strips of sandpaper are connected with milliput so that it looks like it was actually done in the past. Additionally patches and nails as well as boards holding the torn parts. Pay attention to the numerous pieces that further enhance the realism as well as washers under the bolts. The crane side door is also plastic from mini art upgraded with screws and hinges. The crane's beam is made of balsa and the working reel is made of plastic. Everything is fastened with a metal buckle. Of course there will be a rope with a hook and a chain, that's the plan. Next we have a copy of the front wall, the rough cast and the bricks are clearly visible and you can notice Arthur's skill in building such textures. From this point cracks in the concrete slabs do the job and build a really nice appearance. And this is how it looks like with the rail tracks. Arthur, thank you very much for your work. A few more photos from the creation process. All in all very interesting because you will see how it all was built.
Ok, a bit of work to finish the stand. I cut the pieces of balsa into uneven strips to make a path between the trucks. Firstly, it will be a good diversion, separating both lines of trucks and stones, and secondly, it will be an additional support for the trucks of the tank. And so I already have a stand ready for painting, but before that I'm going to tackle the King Tiger. I'm glad you watched this video, hope you had a good time. If so, don't forget to like and subscribe. I would like to thank my great patrons who support me. If you want to see more materials not published anywhere else, photos from the workshop, galleries or you would like to see the next video right now, then check out my website and see what appears there. I try to publish posts as often as possible so that patrons are up to date with what I do. Of course, we are constantly in touch with comments and private messages and this is the first place I check every day. In the next episode I will show you how I improved the standard Mank model by adding various super effects to the steel surfaces of the tank using simple tricks. I hope it will be interesting the more that it's one of the most popular modeling topics. Before I end this episode I'd like to recommend my friend Rick Lawler's Propaganda YouTube channel. This world famous modeler shows his work weekly and in every video you will find tips and tricks that you can try on your model and diorama. You can support him by subscribing to his channel and donating on Patreon. Thanks! That's all for today, see you next Monday, cheers!